now, Heartland Sports with Todd Richards. Hi again, everyone. The Salukis hosting North Dakota State. You figure this would be a good game. It was as we head out to Bad Terra Center for the action. And I'll tell you, Xavier Johnson, one of the nation's better scorers, was hitting him from everywhere. He got him started and just kept him going. Johnson again, that time off to the right-hand side, hits another shot. He wasn't finished. In fact, he wasn't even close to being finished on this night. Johnson, again, the little stop and pop, just one of those guys that's really, really good. You watch him maybe a time or two. You say, that guy's something special he is. And then Johnson with the pass to Jared Hensley. He knows exactly what to do with it. He slams that one home. And they weren't finished on that kind of game either. There was more from Johnson, and then there was more passing. This time to Clarence Rupert, you guessed it. Another basket and the foul. And Scotty Abube hasn't even made the highlights yet. He does now. They swing it around. Abube underneath. Great passing. Great basketball. Great win for SIU. They take it 78-63, to 63, the, the final over North Dakota State. Now, the SEMO women back home tonight against Eastern Kentucky, and keep this in mind, they're getting ready to start that OVC season just around the corner. So an important time for these teams to really start picking up the pace, and the Red Hawks did early. Man, they were on fire, hitting shots inside, outside, you name it, just dropping them down, and it looked as if they might blow EKU right out of the arena in the first half with baskets like this. And again, fans were having all kinds of fun and, you know, watch the defense. This spectacular defense starts the offense the other way. They get the bucket right there, and the Red Hawks excited. But EKU would find a way to mount a comeback in the second half, way down in this game. They really got it going, started hitting their shots, and the Red Hawks, they went cold in this game. Eastern Kentucky would go on, and they would get the win. 57-48, uh, to 48, tough loss for SEMO, uh, but still they got some time to get ready for the OVC. All right, when you talk about NBA hoops, you talk about one of the bigger stories. Of course, former Murray State star John Morant. Man, I'll tell you what, some tough times off the court uh, with the Memphis Grizzlies. Obviously, some disciplinary action and a 25-game suspension. Morant returning, though, uh, and did he ever it returns in a big way. Morant not only would pour in 34 points in this game, but he also hit a big floater at the end of the game uh, for Memphis to have him help him secure that win 115 to 113. So John Morant, a huge comeback uh, for the Memphis Grizzlies in that victory. A long-awaited vote to change the structure of Illinois high school football finally took place today. Specifically, the vote to implement the district format for football across the state of Illinois was voted down. That means the current format will stay in place for at least another year. Illinois has made that decision to start uh, playing scrimmage games, though. They have gone ahead and agreed to do that uh, the week before the regular season. Now, that's similar to what the Missouri teams do, kind of like the Jamborees in Illinois will now start doing that as well. College football... Uh, SIU defensive back P.J. Jules named a first team, another All-American honor for this guy. Uh, the Stats Perform All-American team. Jules played a key role in SIU's outstanding defense. UT Martin punter Aiden Laros also named first team All-American.